Hello everyone and welcome back to A Swift Look. I'm Zoe and today we're going to be discussing why so many Swifties feel like Taylor is hinting at an engagement through her surprise songs, what Travis was up to this past weekend, what Taylor has coming up this week. So much to get into. Let's first start off with Jason Sudeikis making a little joke about Taylor and Travis that has a lot of people thinking thoughts, wondering if it was really just a joke. We'll have to get into all of it. Okay, so over the past weekend in Kansas City was the Big Slick Fundraiser, which is a fundraiser that's put on every single summer by a bunch of famous Kansas City natives, including Jason Sudeikis, Paul Rudd, Rob Riggle, Eric Stone Street, Heidi Gardner, all of these successful actors, comedians come together every single year to do this fundraiser for Kansas City. They'll go out to um, where the Royals play and they'll do like a baseball event. They have this charity gallop, this whole thing. And it is just to raise money um, uh, for the people of Kansas City. And it's a great fundraiser. And pretty much every year, celebrities, other celebrities will come out in support. And Patrick... Mahomes and Travis Kelsey oftentimes will be there as well to support, to raise money, et cetera, et cetera. And this year was no different. Patrick and Travis were both there, were both involved. And there was one moment in particular where Jason Sudeikis and a few of the other people were doing this skit on stage that Travis was a part of. And during this skit, Jason Sudeikis said to Travis, when are you going to make an honest woman out of Taylor Swift? And it got a lot of people laughing, a lot of people like, ooh, but it also got a lot of people asking questions because Jason Sudeikis has been friendly with Travis over the years. He's also been friendly with Taylor Swift. And I don't know, maybe I'm reading too much into it, but there's a part of me that feels like Jason wouldn't make that kind of comment or those kind of jokes unless he knew something was up. Maybe I'm wrong. I don't know, but it was funny. Um, And it got, again, a lot of people talking about this potential Taylor and Travis engagement. Is it going to happen? Has it already happened? If it hasn't already happened, when will it happen? Yada, yada, yada. Now I've said on here before that I don't feel like it's always fair for people to put pressure on Taylor and Travis to get engaged or to get married or to have kids or any of that stuff. Because even though Taylor has hinted through her music and other things that that's what she wants in life, we don't know if that's still true. We also don't need to judge their timeline. They've only been together, I mean, almost a year now. So like, I'm not here to put any pressure on them when they want to do it they will do it and that will be great. But it is hard to ignore the fact that it does feel like Taylor especially has been hinting at what's going on in her relationship with Travis Kelsey, particularly through her surprise songs that she plays at these various concerts. We know for a fact that when Travis was at the shows, she's picking these surprise songs because of him. Like she's being very intentional about the songs that she's choosing to sing when he's in in attendance. The Alchemy, for example, a song about about Travis, she sang while he was in attendance. And we know that Taylor doesn't do very much by coincidence. She is very specific when she chooses to do something. She, She doesn't do a lot by accident. And especially when it comes to her surprise songs, we know that Taylor likes to send these sort of subliminal messages to her fans through her, through her music. It's like, it's like saying something without really saying something. And so there are a lot of people that feel like Taylor is hinting at an engagement through the surprise songs that she chooses to sing. So I'm just going to go over the, I guess, two shows that we haven't covered, which was the final night in Madrid and then the first show in Lyon, France. Um, so in her final night in Madrid, she did Our song mixed with Jump Then Fall. Not necessarily one that you'd be like, oh, this is an Easter egg. They're two, you know, more OG Taylor Swift songs. But Jump Then Fall is about falling in love with somebody. But then she sings King of My Heart. Now, King of My Heart is all about, you know, finding the person, the the king of your heart. The song was originally written about Joe Allen, but it's now been repurposed to be about Travis Kelsey. So this is just an interesting song. Just some, one that people were like, 
Okay, you know, again, could be a coincidence, but interesting to play that. Then the first the first night in Lyon, she sings The Prophecy, which is a song off of Torture Poets Department. It's live debut. And she mixes it with elements of long story short. Now, a lot of people feel like this is a back and forth. The prophecy is all about like wanting to find the person that's meant for you. And can I just see, can I just see what my life is supposed to be like and how it's supposed to turn out? Because right now I feel so sad and I want to feel happy again, essentially. Long story short is somebody at the sort of end of something looking back and saying like, long story short, I got through it and I'm a, I'm, I'm fine. And so this back and forth that's happening between the prophecy and long story short, people feel like is Taylor telling herself, speaking to herself, like, you're going to be fine. You, you found the person you're supposed to be with. So don't worry is basically, I think what people feel like is happening with those songs being combined. Because again, Taylor combining songs, there's meaning behind that. But then, but then she plays 15 with a little bit of you're on your own kid. And we know in 15, there's the line that says, in your life, you'll do things greater than dating the boy on the football team. And when she's saying that line, the smile on her face, she was so happy. It was so knowing, it was so telling. It was just like, I don't know. There was just something about it that made me feel like, oh, she, she knows that she did do something greater than dating the boy on the football team, but oh my gosh, how crazy that my life has come back full circle and now I've ended up with a boy on the football team. Again, I could be reading way too much into all of this. I could be dicing it up and dissecting it way too closely, but I do think there's something to be said for the surprise songs that she sings and chooses to sing. So I would love to know what you guys think in the comments. Do you think she's sending messages to us through the surprise songs? Do you think she's hinting at this engagement with her surprise songs, with her shows? Let me know in the comments. Would love to hear all your thoughts. We still have one more show in Lyon tonight, so maybe we'll get some more surprise songs that we can dissect and break down. Um, And then she's heading to the UK this upcoming weekend, starting her run of shows in the UK, beginning with, I believe, Scotland. Um, And then, you know, she'll head all over the UK. So I think we haven't seen Travis at a show for a while. I think the last show was... The last show he was at was Paris, right? Yeah, I don't think he's been to a show since Paris, which makes sense. He's been busy. He's been working. He's, they went to the White House this past week with the Chiefs. It's been a lot for Mr. Kelsey, but I would have to imagine that in the next couple of weeks, he'll be back in the UK with Taylor on tour with her. We know that he and Jason will be doing their live podcasting event in Cannes, France in a few weeks. So it's going to be a busy time for not only Taylor Swift, but the Kelsey family as well. Um, And Taylor, so we talked about last week that she had kind of an awkward schedule, that she had shows in Madrid on Wednesday and Thursday, and then she had Friday, Saturday off, and then she had a show in Lyon on Sunday night. So it was kind of, she doesn't typically have Friday, Saturday off, but it sounds like she may have spent those two days in London. We know she has a place in London, and it makes sense for her to like, for that to be her home base while she's in Europe but there were some reports that she was actually spotted out supporting her friend Cara Delevingne at Cara Delevingne's cabaret show in London over the weekend. No photos, or at least I haven't seen any photos of her out and about, but again, would make sense. I don't anticipate her like flying back and forth from the States back to Europe. It's just too much given her schedule and the fact that she's performing so consistently over the course of the next few months in Europe. Like there's not, I don't think she has like a weekend off or a week off at any point over the course of the summer, which is kind of crazy. Honestly, I'm surprised she didn't fit in some sort of small break into her schedule, but she's a queen, she can do it. Um, So anyway, I, I, I anticipate we'll probably see her out and about in London over the course of the next few months, especially while she's in the UK touring around there, cause pretty easy for her to get back and forth from all the spots. So that is your Taylor roundup of news for today. Again, share any thoughts, feelings, concerns you guys have. I wanna read all of them. As always, subscribe to our channel, follow us on social media, and we'll see you guys next time. Bye.